at Beecham House for retired musicians, life follows a rhythm all of its own. Fancy for a little rumpy pumpy. Qu'est-ce que c'est, rumpy pumpy? Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we attend the charity gala screening of Quartet in aid of the Musicians Benevolent Fund. But a new arrival. Look, welcome to Beecham House. We have the chairlift, which will be much easier for you. What do I do when I get to the top? Ski down? I've been asked to come to speak on behalf of the Musicians Benevolent Fund. Um, and obviously they're a charity I've known a lot about. And I do a lot of work in music education. So um, a lot of work with charities that focus on music for, for children. Um, but I think sometimes the other end of the scale is, is forgotten about. And um, I think musicians, you know, the, the length of time you dedicate to your art form and, and you spend with your instrument, be it voice or the violin for me. Um, I started playing when I was four years old. It's going to be something I'll do until my fingers don't move anymore. So your tie to that is so immense. And I think accepting the time when that comes to an end is, it can be very, very difficult. So I think um, a film that highlights that process, but also a film that allows people to get a behind the scenes insight into the life of classical musicians because um, quite often there is a bit of a barrier between audiences and, and classical musicians just the, the nature of the formality of of the event of a classical music concert isn't one that allows for much casual interaction boys i know who it is as large as life and twice as terrifying i'm going to say something very rude <laughs> you yeah, and you you're in really, as Tom Courtney's characters have a very close bond. So, yeah. how did you both work to, together to, to create that that partnership? It was a, it was really easy. It was a piece of cake because I am a, a huge admirer of his from before, and he liked my comedy, although we'd never met before. And that happens quite a lot in show business. There's a, you know, you know each other from a distance. It's kind of it's very odd. Because the first time it happened to me it was with Mick Jagger. And, and we were walking to, and along a corridor at BBC towards each other and he went, hello Billy, and I went, hello Mick. And I'd never met him before and I thought, my God, he knows me. And it's, it's, so I knew him by his reputation, as the world does. And then I found out that he played the ukulele and he soared in my estimation, because I play the banjo. Oh, how wonderful, so you were jamming together. Oh, we've had a little jam, yeah. And he gave me some great music that he, a friend of his writes ukulele music so he gave me some great stuff so it was after that it's a piece of cake and, of course, and so talking about the, the music you you were acting alongside real retired musicians yeah so and like? all of them are brilliant and they acted really well some of them had never acted before and they just get right into it you know because they know about performance they've been performing all their lives although they haven't been acting and they, they was extraordinary and some of them Dustin was telling me the trumpet player hadn't had a phone call in 20 years for a gig, and, and this guy used to back Frank Sinatra and everybody. I mean, it's amazing. They, they, they led the London Symphony Orchestra, the lead violins, and I mean, they're really hot musicians. And, and you just, you, it was lovely just sitting and listening to them play, because musicians can't stop playing. You know, when the scene's finished, you hear. It's, it's great. And at lunchtime, after they would, they would come up and jam and have a little, give us a little, or Dustin would say, give us a bit on the piano. The jam away, it was superb. Move those hips. This is not a retirement home. This is a madhouse. What was it about the, the, the story of Quartet that enchanted you and resonated with you to want to be a part of the project? I think. It was, there were various things happening in my life at the time that kind of mirrored aspects of the script. I was then chair of Philip BAFTA and I was working with people like Ken Adam who was the previous designer of Bond or the original designer of the Bond movies, um, Jackie Slocum who shot all the Raiders of the Lost Ark movies, they're sort of 89, 90 and they had so much kind of vitality and wisdom and interest in life still and I was like oh my god it sort of opened my eyes and um, I thought wouldn't it be great to make a film that made people feel differently about old age. I thought that would be fantastic. And my mum had early dementia and we were looking at homes and I thought actually I also, they were also miserable. I thought there's no reason why retirement homes shouldn't be like great places. So on those two aspects I was keen to 
I think I thought if we can sort of shift how people think about old age, it'd be so great. Yeah. And, and you've got such uh, an, an amazing ensemble yeah. of, of actors that can not only not only deliver it, but but take these these characters to an, a, a different kind of emotional level yeah. as well, can't you? That can bring the truth yeah, to, to what the sentiment of the film. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know the fact that it is never too late, you know, as well. You know, and as Billy says, don't die until you're dead. <laughs> We have a serious problem. We can't make the gala into the hottest ticket in town. This house could collapse. We could lose it. We have four of the finest singers in English operatic history. I don't think I want to sing with Jean again. They were married once, but no, it didn't work out. We were different people then. I have a brilliant idea. <laughs> what is it? Oh, I, I can't remember. What is it? I mean, it's acting royalty up there, so... And then little old me. <laughs> Random, but um, no, God, it was a master class, you know, be going to work with them every day and the script's wonderful. I mean, Ronnie Harwood is just a genius and Dustin Hoffman at the helm, you know, wow. And he's such a, because he's such an amazing actor, obviously, he's such an actor's director, he knew how to get the best out of everyone's performance and, oh, it was such an honour to be part of. Yeah. And you're working alongside a lot of the scenes with, with Billy. Lovely uh, Billy, I love him. I mean, how did, how did the, the comedy work and playing out that comedy? Because obviously, you know, Billy comes from a, a stand-up background. Mm. So how did, was it, was it a different kind of process between the pair of you, a different dynamic? Well, Dustin likes improvisation. He kind of wanted to make it really real. So he just let Billy riff and obviously he's hilarious. So all our scenes are together and he's, um, he flirts a lot with my character and my character Dr. Kogan has a real soft spot for him and I really do in real life so there wasn't much acting required. It was lovely, I loved our scenes together um, but yeah you never knew what he was going to say. But that was the magic of what Dustin did with this movie is that you know all the supporting artists are, are genuine um, retired opera singers and musicians so uh, he wanted to capture it, you know, the, make it really real and so in between scenes they'd all be jamming and I mean they're so talented and then Dustin would get on the piano, he's an amazing pianist so what you see on the screen, you know, was really like that. He really kind of captured the magic of it, and yeah, completely. There's loads of stuff. There's loads of bits. There's a bit where Billy makes um, Octavia who's in the wheelchair. They're singing and, and laughing, and we're all falling about laughing. And it's in the film. You know, there's loads of real, really true moments in there. Well, was it the film captures truth, but it also captures falsity, doesn't it? Really? Completely. Well, he, if anything went wrong, he'd be like, right, that's in the movie. But you know, it was just great. And there was one moment where I was feeling quite anxious and nervous, obviously, alongside these guys who were lovely to me and totally took me under their wing. Um, but I was feeling quite nervous and Dustin got down on his knees and said, you know, this outfit is Dr. Kogan, but I want you. And if you're feeling like that, use it in the scene. And it was just the best advice, you know. And it, it, There's a speech at the end of the film that Dr. Kogan gives about being inspired by the residents. And he said, just think how you felt on being on this movie. So it's so from the heart. In fact, it was so from the heart that I was so inconsolable. <laughs> They couldn't use some of the takes because you couldn't tell what I was saying. I was crying so much, but it was a real special job, you know. And I'm and I'm, and I'm just honoured to have been a part of it. What made you stop singing? You must understand, I was someone once. Why do you persist in flirting with me? Older man, vintage wine, seasoned wood. <laughs> Obviously, you wrote the play, um, and now you've written the screenplay. Tom Courtney said, let's make a film of it, and so we did. <laughs> and how, diffi how difficult was it for you to Trans make the film more cinematic, you know, the screenplay more it's cinematic? It's quite difficult, because you have to abandon the play. You have to stop thinking, God, those are beautiful lines, and make them into movies. And that's quite difficult, but, you know, you do it. And we were very fortunate to get Dustin Hoffman to direct it, and to have this cast. It's a sensational cast. I want them in every film I ever write. And interesting, you, you obviously mentioned like Dustin being the director. He encouraged a lot of improvisation. So for you, who was... He didn't. That's not true. Oh, is he not? Oh, who told you that? Um, most of the actors that I've interviewed before. He's, they, they, he's shot the screenplay. Don't believe him a few little bits, but they're exaggerating it to please him. They think he's going to do another film. So I was going to ask you, how important was it for, for the, the actors to adhere to, to the words and the dialogue? It's quite important. It's an English tradition. That improvisation's an American, an American thing. thing. <laughs> get, it, get rid of it immediately. And with regards to the, the content of the story... To, They've is made it, no changes at all. Is it, is it a story of hope and, and optimism? Of course it is. Of a celebration of life, that's what it is. 
And, and having Dustin direct the film as his directorial debut in his 70s, does that give the, the film more gravitas because he's, no. he's a living proof of it? No. He, what he did was it gave us a film. And the both Maggie and Maggie Smith and Tom Courtney said he was the best director of actors they'd ever worked with. That's a pretty good compliment. It is an excellent compliment. How did you both work together? We worked well until uh, he went on the floor, and then I didn't see much of him. And we saw each other again at the the next time we saw each other was when you saw me. <laughs> so it was quite a long gap. But I was thrilled with the film. I think he's done a marvelous job. And I just sent a message to him. He's doing a Q and A tonight in Hollywood. And they asked me if I had a message for him, and I said, yes, you've done me proud, which he has. This is the first time we've seen each other in God knows how many years. Oh, 97. <gasps> is it really that young? We sing what we're feeling. The music sets are emotions free. Your story with Reginald, is it a story of a lost love for your character? <laughs> lost love? No, it's a found love. Well, I suppose, yeah. Lost and then true. found, yes. oh yeah, yeah. Is, is that what enchanted you to that particular part? No, no, because that was the development brought in by Dustin, strangely enough. Um, there was less of that, you know, it's originally a play, and I suggested to Ronnie Howard that he do a screenplay. But Dustin, being from Hollywood, he wanted to have a bit more of a romance between uh, Maggie and I. And we got it, we loved that. <laughs> we were very glad. The tour de force. Yeah. <laughs> and it, also one of the no, scenes. I love this, our scenes together and we're a lot of fun. They were? Yeah, we make things up sometimes, you would. I did hear that, that Dustin actually encouraged improvisation between yeah, you. So little, you know, yeah, what, what was the one she said? Uh, she asked me, you know, I would talk about her having been married several times and she asked me, did I ever get married, married again? And uh, I just say no. And so she said, why not? <laughs> I didn't want to. <laughs> so that's in. It's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you, you, you've also got to, um, you've got to kind of look into the, the other art form of rap music as well. Yeah, well, that, that was Dustin too. Was it really? Yeah, he had uh, Billy's character, Wilf, say to me, you know, because Reggie's going to talk to the kids about opera, explain, he said, you won't, they won't know what you're talking about. He said, if you talk to them about rap, and then you can connect it and compare it up. So we have to see uh, Reggie studying rap. I don't know anything about it. And uh, I think that's a very nice scene, one of my favorites actually, in, so in the thing. And um, that was Dustin's little joke. Was he, he said, oh, ask, you know, ask, ask, them, ask them who their favorite singers are. So, right over that uh, who are your favorite singers? Uh, Lady Gaga, his girl said. So we did it and then he, so we do a pickup. So we do a pickup. When she, when she says, Lady Gaga, you say, Lady Gaga, who? <laughs> he was so pleased with the little joke. He's kept it in. A lot of my jokes he cut. Cut used to cut Billy's jokes. Kept his joke in, mean. <laughs> he can. He's the director, you see. <laughs> yes, he can. Yeah. <laughs> and, as, and Dustin is the director as well. This is his directorial debut in his seventies. So yeah. does that give the film more gravitas because um, he is? Well, an it, it, you know, he's a good story. I mean, he's not he's not directed before, but I mean, a, a thing like Tootsie is a tremendous film. It was his baby. It was his idea. I'm sure he had a lot of input into the shaping of it. So often actors do, you know, they don't get a credit, but often, you know, they can have a, have a, be a huge influence on directors, and I'm sure he has been in his time. And uh, what was it on the, and he, he was like a dog with two tails. On the first day, he said, oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. <laughs> and by the end of it, I'm so exhausted, I'm so exhausted. <laughs> Their love of life is infectious. They inspire us. It's not too late. You're telling me to go out and smell the roses. I'm telling you to sing. Well, that's it from the charity gala screening of Quartet, the film that confirms that you're never too late to live your life. I'm Claire Bueno, and you're watching Premier Scene. Quartet. I think you two are drunk. I think I possibly am, although I find it very difficult to tell the difference at this age. Yep.